Welcome back to Mammalian Anatomy at Keuka College. We're continuing our lecture on Chapter 16, The Special Senses, and here we're going to focus on the visual pathway. In our previous videos, we focused on the anatomy and physiology of the eye and looked at how the eye can collect light and convert that into an action potential. In this vi video, we're going to focus on how information or that action potential is transmitted from the retina to the primary visual cortex in the occipital lobe and see how that information is processed. What I have done here is I've actually created kind of high, um, lists of major points in the visual pathway. So I kind of highlighted the particular structures of interest that I would like you to be familiar with as we're traveling through the visual pathway. I'm going to give you a moment to pause and write this information down. And then we'll go on to a diagram. OK, let's go on to the diagram. First and foremost, we need to orient ourselves to this diagram. So here we're actually seeing the eyes here and here, and this is the brain. And this is a weird view of the brain because we're actually seeing the brain from the inferior view. So this is actually going to be the right eye and the right hemisphere. And over here we have the left eye and the left hemisphere. So we're looking at the brain from the bottom rather than from the top. A clue that can help us out with that is you can see that the temporal lobe is here and it has been cut. And here you can see the frontal lobe over here. So, oops. Okay, so let's just talk about uh, particular structures that we can see. Visual information is going to come into the retina over here and over here. And what I would like you to notice is that the retina is going to uh, process information from the right field of view and the left field of view in a slightly different way. So information that's coming from the left field of view, remember we're looking at the bottom of the brain. The left field of view is going to bring light into the eyes at this angle. And so what will happen is light that is entering the eyes, um, left eye from the left field of view is going to hit the medial portion of the left eye or the medial portion of the retina in the left eye. For the right eye, information or light coming from the left field of view is going to hit the lateral portion of the right eye. So they're both going to hit the right side of each eye. For the right field of view, what will happen is information will come into the eye. And if we're looking into the uh, right eye, it'll hit the medial part of the retina here, of the right eye. And information will hit the lateral part of the retina on the left eye. So it'll come in kind of this direction. This will be important because um, we're going to actually have to cross some axons or decussate some axons. So information can be processed properly by the primary visual cortex. That's why I kind of bring this up. Okay. So let's go through the visual pathway. So light is going to hit the retina. And the retina has the photoreceptors there. And eventually that information will be transmitted to the ganglion cells. And the ganglion cells will, um, their, their axons are going to compose the uh, optic nerve. So over here and here, we have the optic nerve. So this is the optic nerve of the left eye and the optic nerve of the right eye. I want you to notice that the information that is coming in from the right and left field of view is mixed. 
in the optic nerve here. So the blue is representing information coming from the right field of view, and the yellow is representing information coming from the left field of view. So it's mixed in the optic nerves. There's a special point where the optic nerves kind of come close together. We call this the optic chiasma over here. In the optic chiasma, the medial um, axons are going to actually decussate, so it'll cross over. And while the lateral axons, on the other hand, do not decussate, they're going to stay uh, on their side. And this is going to be important because it will allow for the rearrangement or reorganization of axons so that they carry the same information about the same field of view. So here we can see now all of the axons that are associated with the left side or the left field of view are collected together. And here what we're going to have is we're going to have axons that are associated with the right field of view being collected together. So that crossing over or that decussation of the medial axons is going to occur at the optic chiasma. These structures over here after the optic chiasma is the optic tract. And the optic tract will carry these ganglion cells to the thalamus. Remember, all sensory information, with the exception of olfaction, must go through the thalamus to be processed and organized. What will happen is these, the axons of these ganglion cells will synapse with another neuron uh, within the thalamus, and this synapsing is going to occur in a special region of the th thalamus called the later lateral geniculate nucleus. So that's a particular nucleus that allows for processing of visual information. What will happen then is information will go uh, be transferred from the thalamus into the uh, cortex, the primary visual cortex. And it's going to do that using optical radiations over here. So the information will be sent to different regions of the primary visual cortex to be processed. And this primary visual cortex is going to be located within the occipital. Why does uh, the brain do this weird crossover thing? One, it has to do with the optics of light and how light enters the eye. But also, it plays an important role in stereoscopic vision. It can help us be able to see our environment in a three-dimensional way, rather than being flat. So that's one of the reasons why that occurs. All right. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Be good to yourselves, and bye-bye.